up, you guys? Hello, this is Bridget B. Welcome to season three, episode two of the Dirty Blonde podcast. It is so good to be back right where I belong because if you missed it, episode one was kind of like our way to test the waters. And so many of you were asking to see it live and in person. So, of course, I did it. I listened to you. I put it on and I did the whole damn show. And then, at the end of it all, I realized the mic wasn't attached to the laptop. (sighs) I... I could say so many things about this. I could joke, but the joke is already there. You know, there's just not much more I can say. So that was the blondest moment I've ever gone through other than once or twice before. So when that happened, I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna have to remake it, redo it. But there's something about the rawness and the, um, the spontaneity of a live show that you can't capture when you record it. So let bygones be bygones. Forgive me for it not being uh, recorded. And now we can move on with a regularly scheduled program. Right? Regularly? You know, I noticed that during summer break, which much like uh, when you were in school, I don't know if you remember being in summer holiday, you're at home and you know, you're watching videos or MTV or cartoons, whatever you were watching, and then the first day back in school, I would forget how to hold a fucking pen. So <laughs> I'd get to class and I'd remember the teacher going, all right, everybody, take out your books and your pen, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot how to use this damn thing. So to tell you that I've been a natural blonde from birth, like even though I'm not, I'm a brunette, but I've just always been a dirty blonde at heart and I I have stories upon stories. So with that all being said, I think it is time to bring it back with some vigor, pretend that the Dirty Blonde podcast just took a Viagra and we are just ready to pounce all night long. <laughs> Grab your cocktail, join me on this shit show that you've been waiting for. I've missed you all so much. And let's just get down and dirty. So what the fuck has been happening with me? <sighs> the summer is is sort of one of those seasons in the year where I really don't want it to end, yet I can't wait for fucking Christmas. So it'll be, it'll be the 4th of July, and I will be in my little US of A bikini, and I'm like thinking, when is Christmas coming? Or I can't wait for Halloween, or God, I just want some pumpkin in my life. And then now that we're on the unofficial end of summer, it's like, um, I can use a, like another month maybe. <laughs> I think it's just because of the whole just being in a, in a two piece and just running around. But this summer was very special. It was one of those definitely moments in my life that you kind of just had to go with the flow and make some damn things happen. So off my bucket list, I finally went to the south of France. Uh, If you follow me on Instagram at this is uh, Bridget B, I kind of captured some of the moments of my trip and it was lovely. It was beautiful. It was warm. It was sexy. I, the The women were just dressed to the nines. I went to Saint Tropez, Cannes, and Monaco. It was my very first time, and I really did enjoy. I I don't mind 
at all the process of the travel nowadays to get to my end destination. Sometimes you just have to go through the journey and at the same time, enjoy that because you don't know what's going to happen at the end of the rainbow. So you might as well enjoy the whole process. So I got myself my little, my business class, got wasted off champagne. The lady next to me kept asking me how big my boobs were. It was a whole thing. Fast forward to landing into south of France. Saint-Tropez was beautiful. It's everything I expected. I really thought I was going to see J-Lo or Ben Affleck. Because let me tell you, I was ready for J-Lo to ask me, would you mind coming on the yacht and maybe having a three-way with me and Ben? (laughs) I was ready. But... But this would be where I would just tell Ben Affleck to sit on the side and just watch me and J-Lo. I have no interest in the man. But to my dismay, they left a little bit earlier. And I never realized that Saint-Tropez was as small of a port as it was. You could literally walk from one end to the other in, in an hour All the shops, all of the outdoor dining, all of the drinking, all of the clubs. Shout out to Saint-Tropez Opera. Y'all fucking killed it. I was dancing on the tables, getting wasted. And then, Ken, I was only there for one day because I was in transit to Monaco. And, you know, when in Rome, (laughs) you might as well. And... It, that was even smaller of a town because my hotel was facing the water and I only got to go to one uh, evening show, which was Medusa. And shout out to them. They all treated me wonderfully. But I just had no fucking idea how much porn is really watched. Now, I had to be in a mask on a plane for about, I don't know, about 12 hours to get to Paris. And the fact that everyone around me that was sitting next to me, and there was, I was on first class, like row one. So the middle row and the gentleman behind me at some point during the 12 hour flight stopped me or tapped my shoulder, or tried to make contact, and was asking me about porn. They realized that I was Bridget B. Now, I'm very humble. I, if, you, if you're a fan and you know who I am, you do know that I am every day just so grateful to still be able to entertain every single fucking day. But there are certain situations in life where you just kind of sit yourself back and you're like, holy shit, more, how did you realize I was who I was? I'm, you know, in a sweater, I'm wearing leggings. Yeah, my boobs are out, but it's in a shirt. Like you can't hide big tits. You just can't. And it was, it was just great to see and hear It was that sense of, ha, things are nice and normal yet again. So France was great. I was so happy to be able to enjoy that holiday. And then it led me into another great event of my summer. I had my boobs redone. It's been such a journey. And I had to really take some time off. And when I had originally... It intended for season three to begin again. It's kind of when the surgery started to come into play. So now they're great. They are plump and juicy and perky. And on the live show, I did show them off. And I'm so glad the, it's always a party when I get to do something live because I get to talk to you all in real time. And it was, I show them off. And it was like, yes, Bridget, we love them. They look good to suck on. (laughs) Woo! 
but a couple of the comments were they don't look like MILF tits, which was interesting because when I first got my my boobs done about 10 years ago, it's kind of how my whole MILF persona really began. When I started the industry, there are certain videos that you can still collect DVDs that you can collect where I was fresh off the boat. I was waving that white flag. I was so fresh. <laughs> and my my whole personality was still dominating. I was still in charge. And the industry didn't know where to place me. You know, she she looks like a glamour girl. She's young. Er but because I was in my late 20s, so I wasn't really that young, but younger, she doesn't have any kids, can't put her as a MILF. So when I got the tits, it was like, ah, okay, finally, we can put her in a category. So when I say that t- the body, tits and ass do not make the performer, it's very much the point. I was a MILF from day one. I just wasn't categorized as one. But you got to know how to play the game. And then from the boob surgery came the whole OnlyFans debacle. Holy shit, did you guys see what happened? This was such an interesting news time. Because we had a damn siege happening in Afghanistan but top news was only fans it was top news for like 3 days and this is another example of where sex will never go anywhere because it is a natural part of life it is a natural part of human existence and to have only fans right in the headlines when you know even bloomberg had it it, it was just incredible to see and read But at the end of the day, I think what was necessary for the industry. Now, listen, I'm going to give you some some info. This is some some tea from the depths of the industry. Okay, this is things that the normal person didn't get to really understand about what the industry was really feeling. So. As part of a very active adult industry, yes, I am in the top 1%. And I I am not ever changing that. (laughs) I work too damn hard, no pun intended, to get to myself to to where I feel comfortable as an entertainer. I'll be damned if that shit gets taken away from me. You work hard. You put in your dues. You better get your, you know, pat on the back. So that's my home pat. So as the, the percent, the upper echelon of the industry, you, you maintain conversation, you maintain camaraderie, you keep each other in check. You, you, you are behind each other because I'm not jealous of someone else. No one has to, has any reason to be jealous of me. We are all doing our own damn thing. We're all working in our own lane. But if you're not working or if you're not putting in the, the work that you need to to keep yourself in the spotlight, to keep yourself, you know, even relevant, the, that's on you. I can't, no one can tell you what you need to do but yourself. So if you don't have that, that etiquette and that diligence, that work ethic of, man, I'm just going to get up at 5 a.m. I'm going to get my OnlyFans in. I'm going to make sure I talk to everybody. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do this. There's no one that's going to hold your hand and do that. It's fucking sex or it's fucking (laughs) literally. And OnlyFans has made it possible for more people to just be goddamn lazier. Yeah, I said it. No one wants to fucking do any of the legwork that I had to do in the beginning of my career, damn near 10 years ago, such as go to every feature, go to underground clubs, 
this, you know, work on a stage, meet and greet, sign autographs, do the expos, go on set. Like this shit is some work. And when this thing blew up for a couple of hours, it really brought the industry kind of together in a way of, okay, if they tried to use us for their own marketing, then we're going to stick together. We're going to figure something else out. We always do. Luckily, at the end of the day, they realized it wasn't going to do well for them. But it also doesn't really matter. You are not going online to search for a blonde with big tits. Yes, you can. And you will get a million beautiful women. But if you go online and you search for Bridget B., you're only going to get me. You're going to see my photos. You're going to see my video. You're going to get my own OnlyFans. You're going to get my own Dirty Blonde podcast. So at the end of the day, all that hard work from 10 years ago is why I am where I am now. And it's why I get to enjoy this with you. And it's why we get to grow together. It's like you guys have seen me from not being a MILF to, do you guys see me on Deeper and Tushy and, um, oh, God, it's beautiful. Listen, I, it's like you and me are on a, on a, on a, on a date and we're having drinks. I'm just telling you everything. <laughs> Long story short, I'm not going to go into it right now, but Shout out to Vixen, uh, Deeper.com, to Shira.com. The shit was gorgeous. Please look it up. It is so beautiful. It was some of my best work. And it's because of the, the crew is just amazing. Kaden Cross as a director. Maitland Ward as m- my partner in crime. It was just fucking amazing. So make sure you go ahead and check it out because... It just came live a couple of weeks ago. So that is a little bit of the life update, you guys. We kind of, you know, I kind of gave you a little bit of taste of what summer was about. And I don't think it's a more appropriate time than to go into what you are going to start to see in Dirty Blonde Podcast, which is Fan Question of the Week. One of the great aspects of social media and the podcast is that it puts me just that much more in touch with you guys. You can Google till you're fucking blue in the balls, my pussy, my asshole, any of it. And you should. And you better because it looks pretty good. (laughs) But this one-on-one, you can only get that here. And then the questions that I get all the time. I really want to get to as much as possible. And I, I really try and do, you know, 10 questions of the day. Every so often I'll jump on Instagram live and try and answer some stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to dedicate a segment every week to fan question of the week. If you guys are putting in the effort, I want to reciprocate. So make sure you go to the dirty pod, the dirty pod, the Dirty Blonde Instagram, at Dirty Blonde. DM us, write it in the comments, do you, however you want to get it to me on there. It'll get to me and the team. And I am going to protect the dirty, okay? I I protect the innocent. I won't mention your name. It's between you and I, because I know sometimes these things can be really personal, And I want to make sure I I protect you all. So all questions are going to be called Bob. And if it's a girl, it's going to be called, what should we call her? Let's call her um, like Monica, right? Because I consider myself much of a Monica character from Friends. (laughs) If you all knew how anal I was, you'd understand. So that's how we're going to keep it generic. Bob asked or Monica asked. And that way 
we can just keep it nice and simple and protect the dirty. All right. So for this week, Bob asked, Bridget, I'm sure you get this a lot. <laughs> and every time you guys start off that way, I'm like, here we go. It, what are, it's either going to be how much for the night. And I'm like, I am not available. I am not an escort. I am an entertainer. I'm a showgirl. No, no offense given. Kudos to anyone. But if you don't get me on OnlyFans and if you don't listen to me on Instagram, that is it. Your next bet is to come to the show and check out a live show. So it's usually 50%. Or the other 50%, when they start off the question of this, like this, it's because they're asking this. Bridget, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I'm different. Are you now? Are you different? I want to know what I have to do to be a porn star. I have a huge cock and I can blow your back out. So tell me what to do. Period. Let me take a sip of my cocktail. Hold on a second. Okay. Listen, Bob, thank you so much for your question. I do appreciate it. Don't get me wrong, but you all do know I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to tell you how it is. No fucks given, but (sighs) if I got a dollar, For every time this got asked, I'd probably, yeah, billionaire status. (laughs) But you know what, Bob, and my fellow dirty blonde podcasters, we are going to not just dedicate Bob a question, answer. We're not just going to give him an answer. I'm just going to do the whole damn show. Oh, yeah. From now on, this week's episode is all about, so you want to be a porn star, but stay tuned. In another episode, I had touched on this subject, and I went in depth on it, and but in more of a of a shallow context, which was, you know, the, the sexiness of it, the, we really just went in on it in the superficial sense of, so you want to be a porn star and then blah, blah, blah. As I was listening to my archives and some of the older episodes kind of really planning on this season, I realized that, you know what, in fact, Let's dig in a little deeper. That's what Dirty Blonde podcast is all about. It gets in deep, no pun intended, and it's going to open, hopefully, your eyes to other sort of uh, perspectives. And as the season moves forward and we have guests on, hopefully, you'll get another sense of what the world of porn is porn stars, anything around it, sex, relationships, self-esteem, they all go hand in hand. So I was in my thoughts and I don't know about you, much like in the beginning of the episode, I was describing my, what I used to be like on my first day of school at night. I can't sleep sometimes. I, it'll be 2 a.m. and I am you could give me a pair of running shoes and I'll go run to Vegas (laughs) or I can clean. I, I get this. So it's like this sense of, um, urgency and this sense of insomnia. And it's not so much that I can't sleep because of worry. And don't get me wrong. I, I have worries constantly, but it's more of excitement. It's of like, I can't wait for the next day to begin, or I want tomorrow to come, tomorrow can't come fast enough. And it's taken me so long to get to that point in life. 
And there's days where I'm, I can't sleep because I'm scared shitless about the next day, which is very much the fact when I shot my movie for Deeper. Oh my God, you guys should have seen me the night before I had to shoot for Deeper.com. I was at home sweating. I was so nervous. I couldn't believe that at this stage in my career, at this stage of, you know, hey, I'm fucking Bridget B, that there there could be a project that still made me nervous. And we'll we'll get into that in another episode, but but that's sort of kind of where my mind goes in the middle of the night. It'll just go into these random thoughts. One of the random thoughts and one of the things that I was listening to were some of my old episodes. And then I was definitely realizing that the question doesn't stop. So when I say, oh, I could get a dollar for every time this question gets asked, I'd be a billionaire. It's not a joke. Every day, every hour, upon every minute, in some form or another, whether it's IG, whether it's Twitter, whether it's a DM, whether it's answering the podcast, whatever it is, this question does get brought up a lot. So why is that? Well, I started thinking, is it about the money? Is it about being famous? Is it about being on easy street? Hey, I want to wake up to and just have sex and get money. Is it about the sex? Hey, I want to wake up and fuck some beautiful women. Or is it about ego? Do you feel like you're so good in bed that you could be a porn star? Well, shit. What if being a porn star had absolutely nothing to do with either one of those topics. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Bridget B, come on now. Shut up. Don't tell me you don't like it because of the money, because of the fucking, because of the ego, because of the fame, because of Easy Street. Oh, sure. Those particular points do come about being a part of the industry, but, oh, ladies and gentlemen, there is so much more. It's so much more than what you see. And this is where I was thinking, you know, I think it's to start off the the season. Let's go with boom in your face. What's the number one thing that I get asked? Let's just hit it. Let's nail it. And I think this was absolutely appropriate. Thank you, Bob, so much for that fan question because it just led us right into, I didn't even have to research. This is just It was just served to me on a silver platter. I fucking love weeks like that. So when you think of porn and you, you, Bob or Monica, feel the urge to ask me such a question, I realize really depending on the time of day, depending on the climate of the world, depending on how you feel in your life, You might very well look at to certain avenues, different avenues than you ever thought possible in order to make money. Once again, OnlyFans, it really opened the doors to many people who never thought they would see themselves being so accessible in order to make money. Okay, you got that. When I was a stripper in college, I actually started off as a cocktail waitress and then, you know, I worked my way up to being a stripper and God, those were some fun days. But side note, LeBron James still owes me $21,000. Shout out to LeBron James and Usher because they didn't, that's a whole nother episode. Oh, I'm so going to, I'm going to hell for this. This is what happens when you take a sip of whatever cocktail is in my (laughs) I told you, this is why the podcast is going live on Fridays on happy hour, (laughs) because it's the only appropriate time. (laughs) So 
when I started off as a stripper, I did it because I had to make fucking money. I was in college. I was at Kent State University in Ohio, having the time of my life. I was in a sorority. Shout out to Kai Omega. And I needed to support myself. Why? Because no one was knocking on my door to pay my rent. Absolutely nobody. No sugar daddy. Lord knows no boyfriend. I was paying for everyone. Um, So I had to survive. Now, a lot of people, and I get quite a bit of the, well, you know, why didn't you just get a real job? You know, real job. Like, Bridget, why don't you just get a real job? Why didn't you just... Well, what did you want me to do in college? I was attractive. I had a good head on my shoulders. I love the stage. I have no problem with nudity. And I was in an area where strip clubs were thriving. So why would I work harder, not smarter? I would go into the club, I do my shift, and then I would come home with some, you know, dollar bills. I paid for my school supplies. I took my friends out to drinks. I mean, in Ohio at that time, fuck, I could pay for an entire bar's drink for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Red Hat and Sluts were 50 cents on a Tuesday night. Woo! <laughs> Shout out if you remember those days. So, you know, and I remember that the reason I was paying for people was because I wanted their friendship. Huh. Interesting. I realized that because I was an attractive female who didn't take shit from anyone, I didn't have many friends. It came with the territory. I I don't know if it was because I was Spanish. I don't know if, you know, maybe because people felt intimidated because their boyfriends wanted to fuck me before them. I don't know. And I could care less. But the more money I had accessible to me, the more I was able to be friends with people because I was buying their friendship. I was buying relationships. So the more I craved and the more I needed to make money real quick and strip clubs were there. I was the most popular bitch on campus. And when I'd get home to my dorm or when I came, I, then I got my own apartment. Now we're going back in the day. And like I said, we're, we're going in deep, you guys. We're going in deep. A lot of this money wasn't necessarily what I was after. I wasn't after the dollar bill. Sure, it felt good. I didn't mind being looked at sexually because at the end of the day, that just meant I was doing something right. No one ever did anything to make me feel less than because as you all know, once again, if you're a fan, you do know I don't take shit from anyone. And that was from the very fucking beginning. So little Bridget B in college, well, before she was Bridget B, she start, I started this uh, character of, well, if I paid for your drinks and if I paid for when we went to Cabo or whatever it was, or if I paid to be in a sorority, I was going to have friends. Finally, females would probably finally be my friend. And it worked. I paid my way through <laughs> through college. And then the friendships that I craved, the relationships that I craved, I finally obtained. Well, great. I graduated. We move on. I moved to LA. And then the way my career started, my car broke down in front of the Vivid building and... I was using my vibrator at lunch, got caught, the whole thing got fired. So this aspect of the career began 
at this stage in my life, because I was, you know, damn near 30, I was about 26, I got caught using a vibrator and I had a financial difficulty because I needed to fix my car. And I had to take care of shit by myself. So if you're following the whole trajectory, when I started in college, going my way through my car breaking down at Vivid and getting fired for using a vibrator, I was being true to myself. The reason I got fired was because I was sexually uninhibited. And if everyone was gone... Why couldn't I use a vibrator? <laughs> and I wasn't going to eat lunch. You know why? I couldn't fucking afford to eat at, uh, where was I? The, that, um, it was a very, it was Beverly Hills, but it was not Beverly Hills. It was like Century City. I was in a real estate agency at a commercial real estate agency in Century City area. For you to get a drink and lunch, that shit was like 30 bucks. Again, no sugar daddy. I was paving my own way in LA. I had to figure shit out. And I did what everyone wanted me to do. I graduated college and I wanted to use my degree. I wanted to use my people skills. I wanted to use the work ethic that I've always had to make a living. Well, fuck be it. I got fired within about two weeks. I, you get 90 day probation at that point. So I got fired within the 90 day probation. So no matter what, I had to figure it out and work smarter, not harder. Because you and you and you listening, were not going to give a fuck about me. All you wanted was to make sure that I did what was right. Well, what's right for you isn't necessarily what's right for me or what's right for the person next to me. That's the beauty of life. That's the beauty of, well, I live in the USA. And the fact that I have the freedom to make my own choice of what I want to do with my life is one of the most beautiful aspects and something that I do not take for granted on a daily basis. So when I get these questions and then when I couldn't sleep, and I went into this fucking two, three hour, like inner thought and inner monologue. I was like, I wonder how many people feel like this. I wonder how many of you listening are like, you know, I do want to do porn because you guys make it look so easy. Well, listen, if it was so easy, everyone would do it, but that's not the case. Once again, being in the upper echelon of the industry I have to work every day to make sure you and you and you that Bob and Monica still want to ask me those questions because there's 20 bitches right behind me trying to take my space and I'll be damned if I, (laughs) if I let that happen, I don't think so. So if at the end of the day, what you guys are looking at is easy street. And if, you know, one more time, people are like, just go get a real job, entertaining, is a lot of work, but the way you entertain is up to you. I choose to give you guys 110% every day of my life. I love what I do. I love being here behind the mic. I love showing you guys a really good show at the clubs. I love putting on a good show in front of the camera and on my Instagram and, you know, with the dirty blonde Instagram, I want you guys to, even if for a moment, take a look, forget your problems and just dig in and enjoy, learn something new or feel something different. And I really think that this question can be based really solely on why it is that I'm getting asked. Because again, if you're talking about easy street, if you're talking about money, nothing is harder than for a porn star to go out there and get a loan for a house. Nothing's harder than for a porn star to go into PayPal 
and get herself or himself or their business or their production company a PayPal account because they don't agree on adult content. So you get taken off. OnlyFans just showed us that at any point, some religious group can come in and tell you that it is not okay for you to look at sex because it is morally incorrect. Who says? Last time I checked, I could do whatever the fuck I want. I am over the age of consent. I pay my taxes. And I am sure as hell not going to let anyone tell me what to do because I live here. And when you take all of this into context, it goes so much deeper than just porn at its basic level. And one of the things I'm so proud of is really opening eyes and opening ears to another perspective. So, Bob, I hope this kind of answered your question. I gave you a, I gave you a whole show. I didn't just answer it. <laughs> I gave you a whole show on it. And it's going to become very clear that as the entertainment industry is opening its doors to people like me. Yes, they are. As more industries such as cannabis, such as um, mainstream, things that aspects of, of careers and industries that weren't really open and vocal are suddenly intertwining. It's a beautiful thing. Of course, if you listen to the bonus episode that was live on uh, OnlyFans last week, I kind of touched base on my new project, something that I am so passionate about and I'm so excited to introduce. And it's kind of my way of giving back. And we're going to dig into that a lot deeper in next week's episode. So definitely stay tuned. In the meantime... Just go ahead and go on Instagram and follow at Enjoy Good Girl. It's definitely going to be a project that you'll you'll see and you'll hear. Make sure you stay tuned for uh, next week and I'm going to touch on it a lot more. But for now and for a little bit of the teasers, because I did announce who the contract a performer that I have joining me as my partner in crime, Miss Madison Ivy. She's going to be on the show very soon. And it's just such an exciting time. But we'll explain on that next week. So make sure you stay tuned. So with all that being said, again, Bob, I hope I did answer your question. And in order to sum it up, I think the best way to really put it all in one nut, you know, and instead of a, instead of a nutshell, just one nut. (laughs) Listen, I don't know how you boys do it with blue balls. I swear to God, how do you all walk around (laughs) thinking about fucking and not able to do anything about it half the time? (laughs) If I was a guy and I would have gotten caught at my job, at my first job when I got fired and I would have been like stroking it instead of like using a vibrator. (laughs) I think that would have been like so, so much worse. (laughs) Or that's just me. Who knows? So to kind of put it all in a nut, um, the industry is not easy street. The industry is not all glory, is not all fame, obviously. And Getting into it is so much more than just what you see on the outside. You have to really think about the ramifications. You have to think in 5D reality and think about how it's going to affect you in five years, in 10 years. For me, I've been so damn lucky and it just keeps getting better. But am I the exception to the rule? I would say so. I, I would say that my career has been because of you guys and I'll say it once and I'll say it again. I thank you guys so much for the support and with that support, don't forget, make sure if you are in the Philly area, the weekend of September 23rd, your girl Bridget B 
ta 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 is going to be live all up on it on the stage at Club Risque, which you can follow them on Instagram at Club Risque Philly. I'm going to do one show Thursday night, two shows on Friday, and two shows on Saturday. I, if you've never been to one of my live shows, your showgirl comes out. Your showgirl puts it out. I do impersonations. I give you, I give you showgirl vibes. I give you some Vegas, and no matter what town you're in, you're a part of it. You come up, you dance with me. We just have such a fucking party. We have such a good time. And then between the shows, you get to meet me at a meet and greet. I, I sign things and we talk and it's just such a fucking blast. And I'm glad it's all back to where it used to be. So this month it's going to be Club Risque. And then next month, um, I have to actually, hold on, give you my, uh, next month I'll be in Exotica, New Jersey and Spearmint Rhino, Pittsburgh. But we'll talk about that after this one's done. So make sure you follow them. You call the club in advance, get yourself a VIP table. You bring your friends out and, uh, it's just, we kill it. We have such a good time. So that is all for this week's episode of the dirty blonde podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you follow all the things for all of the information that you heard on the show. You will see links where you can find more in the episode description. And for this week's YouTube, I suggest you definitely take a look. Uh, The YouTube for this week is going to be my top five things that are on my nightstand that I can't live without. What could they be? So stay tuned for that. Follow the YouTube, follow the OnlyFans, and follow the podcast. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. See you next week. And don't forget, what do I always say? Life is way too short. Just do whatever the fuck you need to do to make yourself happy. Just keep it legal. (laughs) See you next week. Bye.